Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Have you ever been out shooting and you've stumbled across a waterfall but realized that you didn't pack your tripod or your ND filters? Well, instead of just taking an image like this, I'm going to show you how in post-production you could use Photoshop to realistically blur the water. What prompted me to do this video was this image that I posted to my Instagram. Uh, those of you that follow me on Instagram know that I write how I got the shot. I write in detail how I took the image. And I mentioned that for this shot, there was lightning. And I didn't want to drag my tripod out or take the time to use ND filters. But I was able to blur the water using Photoshop. And I explained how I did it. Well, I decided that a video would probably be better than a written explanation, so I decided to do this video. And for this video, I'm going to start out in Lightroom, and we're going to work on this image, because I think it's a little more obvious to see the blur effect on this smaller, tiny little waterfall here. Now, I have to give props where props are due. Uh, I didn't invent this method. And I was lucky enough to find the article. At least five years ago, I read an article on how to do this on Digital Photography School. So I'll have a link to that article in the description below this video so you could read that article that I learned from. Now, we're starting out in Lightroom because typically that's what I do. And if you're ever uh, presented with a situation where you have flowing water, and you want to blur it, but you don't have either your ND filters or your tripod or both, it's relatively easy to do, although it is a multi-step process and you do need Photoshop. What I suggest you do is take five to 10 images. Now, what I did was I went in front of this tiny little waterfall here, and I took a vertical shot, as you could see, and I fired off just 10 shots. So I I put my camera on continuous low, actually, and I just took uh, 10 images, you know, clunk, 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 and these are them. And you could see that there's little movement between them because I was hand holding the shots. Now, what I do is I will process one partly in Lightroom. And when I say partly, that means I'm mainly just doing tone adjustments. So what I did was I took this first image and I changed the white balance to cloudy, and I did some tone adjustments, and I didn't do anything with the present section at all. And really, all I did then was lens corrections. So I did that to this first image. Now what I want to do is copy all that processing to the other nine images. So to do that, make sure you're clicked on the image that is processed. Then hold the Shift key in and click on the last unprocessed image so they're all selected. Then go over here where it says Sync. And you could go in and just uh, check the actual adjustments you want to copy over. I'm going to leave them all checked uh, because I did some but not all of them. But that's okay. So we'll do that. And what it's doing now is it copied those adjustments to all of the 10 images. So all the images are processed the same way. Now I'm ready to bring these images over into Photoshop. And to do that, just right click on any of the images down in the uh, film strip at the bottom, go up to edit in, and then go all the way to the bottom. It says open as layers in Photoshop. So we're going to click there. And what it will do now, it will take these 10 images and it will open them up into Photoshop. And it's actually going to take a little while to do that. So what I'll do is I'll pause the video and we'll come back when they're all opened up as layers. Okay, all 10 images opened up as layers in Photoshop. If you go over here to the layers panel, you could see that all 10 are here. Now because I handheld this, I need to align them. So what you'll do is click on the top layer then hold the shift key down and click on the bottom layer so they're all selected. Then go to the top edit menu and then down here to where it says auto align layers. Click on that and this 
dialog box will pop up and you get to choose the projection you want to use. Just use auto. I found that works well. And I don't click vignette removal or geometric distortion. I don't click either of those and I'll click OK. So what it's doing now is it's going through each of the images and it's looking for anything that should be still in the shot. So not the flowing water. So it's looking for the still rocks and things and it's lining uh, each of the images up at pixel level to one another. And again, this will take a little time. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll return when they're all aligned. Okay, we're back. Photoshop has aligned all 10 images or all 10 layers at the pixel level. And you can see the result of this alignment caused us to have some blank pixels around a couple of the edges. But I'm not going to worry about those right now. We'll crop those away uh, when we're ready. But right now, what we're going to do is take the top layer. So click on the top layer and duplicate it. If you have a PC, hit Control J. If you have a Mac, hit Command J. And I'll explain why we're duplicating that layer in a moment. But right now, just duplicate that top layer. Now turn that layer off. And we have our original 10 layers below it, or the 10 images actually below it. So what we'll need to do is select all of those. So click on that second layer, hold the shift key in and click on the 10th layer. So that's actually image one through image 10. That's actually layer two to layer 11, I misspoke. But those are the original 10 images. Our copy is not selected and it's not turned on. Now what we want to do is create a smart object. To do that, just right click on any of those 10 layers and then go down to Convert to Smart Object. And you'll see that we get that progress spinning wheel and it's going to take a moment to convert all of those into a single smart object. And unpause the video and we'll come back when it's done. And you'll notice when we do come back, we'll just have one layer there for the 10. So we'll actually have two layers. You'll see in a moment. Okay, we're back. Uh, Photoshop has taken those 10 layers and created one smart object out of those 10 layers. And you can see it's right here. Our top layer, that's that copy of the top layer, is still there and it's not turned on. So just leave it alone. We're going to go to our smart object now and make sure that's selected. And what we're going to do now is finally blur the water. To do that, make sure that layer is selected and go up to Layer, down to Smart Objects, then down to Stack Mode. And two of these stack modes work well with flowing water. That's Mean and or Median. So choose one or the other. If it doesn't look good, then try it again with the other. And I'm going to pick the first one, Mean. So we'll click on that. And what it is now going to do it's actually going to uh, stack these images with that mean algorithm. And what it will do, you'll see when it's finally done, it will blur the water. And again, it's going to take a while. And I'll pause the video and we'll come back when it's ready. Okay, we're back. And you could see now that the water is blurred, but the rest of the image is not. And if I turn on this top copy layer that we did, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now, as it is, actually, that's very good. I would consider this done in Photoshop. And then what I'll do is I'll bring it back into Lightroom and process it to finish it off. But the part of the reason why we created this copy up here of the top image is because. Often when you do this, uh, the wind's blowing and trees are moving and there's other things moving in the scene. And what will happen is when you do this uh, mean stack mode or median stack mode, uh, that will be blurry as well. And you may not want that blurry. You just want the water blurry. So what you could do is turn on this copy layer we, we created and make sure that it's active and selected then put a mask on it. So click down here on the bottom right and click on that mask. 
Then get a brush. Hit the B key on your keyboard to select the brush tool. Um, use the bracket keys to get the right size brush. I'm going to use the right bracket key to make it larger. The left bracket key makes it smaller. Uh, flow and opacity I'll keep at 100. And because it's a white mask, make sure you're clicked on it, by the way. And you could then paint in black on the mask. And you'll notice that if that spinning wheel of death went away, there we go. Then we could just blur out the water and leave the rest of the image alone. So if you have a, it's a windy day and you had trees moving and stuff like that, you could just use this mask and then just use it to blur the water, as you could see, just like that. So as simple as that. So there's our blurred water. Now what I'm going to do is I'll finish this off in the video. I'm going to, uh, you could actually, I should add, if you want to keep processing in Photoshop, you could do this. You could use Adobe Camera Raw, which uses the same process engine as Lightroom, or you could put adjustment layers on this, whatever you want to do to finish it off. But I'm more comfortable using Lightroom, so I'm going to just go up here to, to uh, Photoshop and quit. And this is how I do it. And when it comes up, do you want to save this? Go yes. So we're going to save. And what it will do, it will save the image, and then it will, um, when you reopen Lightroom, it will be in Lightroom when, once it's saved. And you can see bottom left-hand corners our progress bar for our save. And once it does, and one thing I should add, uh, since Adobe's last update, uh, this um, I'm creating this video April 24th, uh, 2019. Since Adobe's last update, it's really using a lot of resources on my iMac, and it's running super slow. I mean, really slow. And um, I looked up some, uh, like, why is this doing it? And it said that you have to delete all your Adobe programs and, and reinstall Creative Cloud. And that should take care of it. And I don't feel like doing that. So I'm putting up with the slowness. And um, it's a shame. I mean, it really is sometimes. Um, I'm not really sure what Adobe's thinking sometimes. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can see the save is taking a little while. It's at 99%. And typically, when you do save, though, even in the uh, before this update, when you save uh, multi-layered uh, images um, or images that have smart objects in them, the save takes a lot longer uh, to uh, finish. But anyway, I'll pause the video again. Sorry about that. And we'll come back in once I have this closed down and we're reopened in photo or reopened in Lightroom. I'm sorry. Okay, we're reopened in Lightroom. The image did show up in Lightroom. It's actually in the exact collection that I had the original 10 images. And this is it here. And you can see there's our blurred water. And here's image 10 from that sequence. And here's the blurred water one. And you could go, there's image one. And there's the blurred water one. So it did a good job. Now I'll just quickly finish the processing. First of all, I want to crop out where those blank pixels were. So I'm going to bring that in there and a little bit there so that's good I'm gonna go to the basic panel and you could remember for the original images all I did was uh, white balance and tone adjustments and I could readjust tone here I'm gonna add some clarity though and we're gonna add some saturation um, maybe I'll get a new white and black point like that so well, that's good. Let's see what the if I add a little contrast with the tone curve. I kind of like that. Maybe open up the shadows just a touch. Maybe just add it a little bit too much there. Just a little bit like that. Go to this HSL color tab. I want to increase uh, yellow saturation a little bit and orange saturation a little bit. And um, go to luminance and I want to make the yellows a little brighter. The greens a little darker. Orange is a little brighter. Might be overdoing it a little bit. We'll go back up to the, ba uh, the basic tab and I'll bring saturation down a touch. And we'll go to detail. I'm going to bring sharpening up to like, I don't know, 
or usually I'll zoom in, but to save time, I'm not going to. And um, that's it. We'll just finish it off with a vignette so we could put a bow on this video. So there is our, uh, like, thaw, slow shutter speed image. As you can see, it was shot at 1 500th of a second, but we were able to get that blurred water by taking these 10 images into Photoshop. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to that Digital Photography School article where I learned this, so you could check that out. I'll also have a link to my Instagram. Um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, if you do, you'll notice that for every image I post, I write how I got the shot, and I write in detail how I took the image. So uh, check it out. Maybe you'll find it interesting. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.